So finally, uh, the guys up at Crazy Horse in Bury St Edmunds have sent me a Indian Scout Super Hooligan. So I'm going to go and uh, get my lid. And that is a nice day. Take it for a spin. Yeah, you have to hold on a bit. Two birds break on. Another. Uh, and another one. Oh, got a couple left. How was it? Well done. <laughs> I've lost two vertebrae. Have I got blood coming out of my ears down here? That's, that's a beast. Hi there, I'm Kev from Ace Classics. This is my shop and we specialise in classic triumphs. Today I'm going to be talking to you about three Steve McQueen replica bikes we built. One being a Desert Racer, one being a Great Escape bike and another being an ISDT bike. To get this finished product, we've looked at pictures, we've gone through the film, paused the film, looked back at the film, looked at more pictures. I'm Chelsea and this is my 1966 Triumph 650 Rickman Matisse. So I built this bike over the space of nine months with the help and guidance from my dad who had an original 1962 Rickman Matisse which I had completely fallen in love with. I'd always loved off-roading. I got my first off-road bike when I was eight. Nothing beat the feeling that I got from riding my dad's scrambler. So basically one day we decided that let's do it, let's build me a Rickman. I'm down here at Bike Shed 2019 to exhibit my R100 trike. This is a shed built project. The project's probably been around seven years in the making and essentially it's an R100 rear end mated to a quad front end. Good afternoon everybody. My name's Ray Petty and this is Ray Petty Mechanica. As you can see from the bikes and the signage, we do Ducatis. I've been doing Ducatis for so long, it hurts now. So let's go and have a look inside and um, we'll see what we got. So if you've been wondering how long I've been doing this, there's a couple of pictures here of me. One was when I was sweet 19. If you ignore the flares and the perm and the moccasins, which you probably can't, you'll see that there's a Yamaha 250 calf racer there that I built in my bedroom at my mother's. On this bench we have a 1100 Evo Monster and we're just about to kick it off and kick it into life for the first time. Def Machines is myself and James Hilton. Let's take a look at um, a Def Machines bike but probably the most famous guzzy on the planet. I'm Ben here at the Bike Shed Festival at Lydon Hill. I vented my Triton into the vintage class. We had a little problem, we pushed it up and down the pit lane trying to get it to go, but everyone had done their warm up lap, lined up on the grid. The marshal came up and he said, boys, if you get this thing to go, you can get out on the track. The old girl fired up. At the end, I saw several people really cheering that I managed to get round and, and managed to carve through a few of the other vintage bikes. I was so happy in it. It's made, really made my day. And you know, that's what old proper classics are all about. It's the adventure of just getting it on the track as well as riding it around the track. I'm Jody Milhouse. I'm from Thornton 100. I'm here today at the Bike Shed 2019. I thought that if I'm going to build something, I'm going to build a showstopper. So I wanted to retain some sort of MotoGP inspired winglets on the side here. This was all aluminium built from scratch and I built this titanium exhaust. There's about 70 hours worth of work in the exhaust. The 3D printed headlight. I CAD designed this all myself. Billet aluminium subframe. This was machined in two parts and welded together with the light set into the rear here. For a piss. Yes! <laughs> Thanks, dog. <laughs> I'm Gareth, I'm head of retail at the Bike Shed, and this is my staff bike, a Honda Africa Twin. The thing is, now with all the bars and everything, I can just give it a go. Do you want it? Chuck it on the floor, see, see how they work. Right, okay. Just to see if they do their job. And then it's as easy as just lifting it up. Normally, you've got adrenaline and stuff picking it up. First things first. Don't you just grip it and rip it? This? No. <laughs> We're here at Bike Shed Festival at Lydon Hill. Um, we've had a manic day. There's been loads of racing. Everyone's had an absolutely brilliant time. 
and this has really been a day that's all about taking the wrong sort of bike onto a track. It's about having a really good time and us putting on a festival event. So me and Dan have commandeered a gator and we'll give you a quick tour. Come on Dan. This is great, why haven't I been on one of these all day? I've been walking miles. I need to pull the boss rank thing more often. We started researching the Samurai General and we started really getting into Samurai armor. That's where essentially everything came from and everything that you see now before you from the, the design of the, the bodywork is kind of reminiscent of the, the plate work in a, in a piece of armor to the, the garments and clothes that they wear underneath and the way it's folded that's represented in the seat uh, to the sword which is represented at the front all the way down to how aggressive the bike stands so it just looks like it's spoiling for a fight. So we're going to take a closer look at Kenzo. I'm Connor. I'm at the bike shed today with my 1979 BMW R80. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of non-standard bits on the bike, which, is, uh, which have all been machined by me. I have absolutely no background in machining at all. So I bought a CNC machine and a lathe and got on the phone and got on YouTube. And this is where I ended up after a year of messing around with that. It was in a hedge in the north of England for about two or three years. So when I got it, it was absolutely shocking. So everything's come apart, everything's been cleaned, engine's been rebuilt. It's basically a new bike at this point. This is the first bike that I've ever done, probably to this level, definitely. I've done a couple of small things, but this is the first proper custom that I've built. Hi, I'm Paul from November Customs with our 1991 Kawasaki 750 Zephyr Custom Calf Racer built in the 10 foot by 15 foot shed with a, a rudimentary miller, a basic lathe, hand tools and all the rest of it. So this is a genuine shed built bike. The styling came from, well, we've always wanted to make a monocoque bodywork bike. It's just something that's always been there that we've always wanted to do. So we, we tried it, it's steel, all hand formed. We put a mechanical anti-dive on, which we'll go through later on. And there's not a nut or bolt that hasn't been touched on this bike by us. And uh, I'll give you an overview now. Hi guys, uh, my name's Simon Pavey. Uh, I've done Dakar Rally 10 times. This is my son, Llewellyn Pavey. Had the pleasure of going to Dakar together in 2015. We're here at the bike shed in London. Plan today is really to show you a little bit around what a Dakar bike is. The real key to success in that event is being able to navigate. Yeah, talk us through the navigation, Lel. Tell us how you can find your way. <laughs> I'm here at the bike shed today with my beautiful Triumph Tiger Cub Pre-65 Charles bike. The reason I got this bike is I've been riding off-road trials since I was about 11 and that's usually on modern trials bikes and then a couple of years into that my dad decided to get himself a matchless and I thought hell no I'm not getting left behind so got the Tiger Cub. So since I've had this bike we've been doing a lot of pre-65 trials down Hampshire way where we're from and just riding a lot of the trials that we ride with our clubs. It's a really lovely lightweight bike so it's easy for me to lift up and move around. So that's a little bit of history behind the bike, let's have a look through it. So this is the Zero XP, an electric motorcycle commissioned by Zero Motorcycles and built in our workshop in San Francisco. I really thought it was an opportunity to have a look at motorcycle design, especially electric motorcycle design, and see what we could do with it. If we didn't have to build a motorcycle that looked like a combustion engine motorcycle, or in fact designing it as if petrol bikes had never existed, how would you go about it? Hi, my name's Nick English, one of the co-founders of the Bremen Watch Company. Here today to talk to you a little bit about my love of all things engineering, um, including my love of bikes, a little quick tour around my garage here, but then come and have a glimpse into our workshop and just down the road in Henley-on-Thames and see where we're making these watches on British soil. My name is uh, Anders and I'm come here to Bike Shed Show to show off my Honda CX500 shed build bike. It was a rusty beaten up old CX but I think uh, it could be something nice for my daughter. Everything on the bike is homemade by me in my workshop. Then we have the exhaust, also a little bit challenging also, they are homemade. And it's uh, coated with some ceramic coating, smells like shit when you do it but then you don't have to paint it again. 
are moist and ready, Steve. I'm heading to Greenfield Dirt Track. I got a little tip off that the FTR 750 will be um, there and running. That's just the f***ing tits that is. And yours truly is going to get a spin on it. So uh, day one's done, chucking it down with rain, the little bobber has been priceless. So despite the rain, I managed to get on and push on a little bit. You can exploit it and use it. I mean, I ended up in a drag race with a guy in a Harley. <laughs> it murdered it like three or four times in a row. I've seen your buddy Butch. He's a big bike collector guy, tons of great toys. Stayed there far longer than I should have done. Most of the PCH has been washed out because the rain's been that heavy. It's just washed the road out, so the roads are all closed. So, my little bobber made it 1,200 miles. I was trying to keep my hands warm on the engine and set my glove on fire. <laughs> so I'm in Salem, Oregon, and I've got an Indian FTR 1200 tape on the front. I have no clue what I'm doing. What was that? So then it was off to the one show and I'm looking forward to it. The builds that have been there and the, the ingenuity and the creativity goes in is something else, man. Could have done with that on the way up. So despite the shitty weather and all my whinging about it, I had a blast, as you always do. Every journey's an adventure, definitely worth doing, gotta say.